All right, one of the last tunes I'm going to record for you here while I'm here at Fort Defiance today is um, the White Cockade. Um, now this is uh, associated with militias um, in North Carolina. I found reference to it at least um, with the Stokes County Militia, which some of my people were involved in apparently. Um, it, during the War of 1812, there's mention of them marching out to uh, the White Cockade on their way to kind of head towards Canada, which they, they never made it. The war was over apparently by the time they, they even got, I think, into Virginia or maybe Maryland. Um, however, you know, uh, that that's a secondary source from about 50 years, actually 70 years later, I think, in 1880s uh, or 1870s that that's mentioned. Uh, it's generally, uh, it's from some newspaper report from, I think, the Danbury newspaper at the time, Danbury. But anyway, um, the White Cockade was a popular marching tune. It's sometimes also associated with uh, Lexington and Concord. There's a legend that, um, that, and an account from later, a secondary account, um, about the uh, Fifers at Lexington and Concord on their way chasing, the, or at Concord on the way chasing the British, uh, played the White Cockade, or White Cockade, however you pronounce it, but I think White Cockade is usually how we say it. Anyhow, uh, there may be some connection between this tune and the old tune Hop High Ladies or uh, uh, Can You Horse Carry Double Uncle Joe. There's some similarities, I think, in the tune there. Uh, but here's the white cockade, or here's the best version of it I can play anyhow. <laughs> Like I said, this is all work in progress, and uh, just had gut strings on this, and been seriously getting into 18th century music, uh, really only for about a year. I've only had gut strings on this since uh, January, um, and these are actually probably in need of repair. Still need to get a good, true Baroque tailpiece. Had to make that one, and my tail gut's actually a piece of deer sinew, but it works. You know, perhaps that's what somebody would have done if they had to repair it here in the back country. And my bow is a clip-in bow, um, but. Uh, this could have been something somebody had. Most likely they had Roman screw type bows. There's plenty of advertisements or advertisements for um, bows imported from uh, Europe, uh, particularly from Italy. They call them Roman screw bows. Maybe it's just because it's in the, Rhine, or, uh, the um, Roman fashion. Um, during that period, you know, there's beginnings of transitions of bows going from the Baroque style pike head bow, uh, which is what I tried to model here. As you can tell, I didn't glue it in the right spot, but that's mainly because I had a shorter hank of hair than what I thought. This came off of my modern bow that unfortunately was destroyed in a flood at the reenactment of uh, uh, Ramser's Mill last year. But I recycled and uh, prevailed, or at least went forward and made something out of it. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more in my adventures into 18th century fiddling. If you are ever in this area of North Carolina, be sure to come to Fort Defiance. It's an excellent historic site um, with history ranging from uh, the 1760s with the uh, the Cherokee War, uh, all the way to, you know, well, to the modern era, really. Um, it's a great site. It's been very well um, restored, um, and it's just a, an excellent piece of North Carolina and really world history. Uh, so come on out to Fort Defiance sometime. Check it out. 
tell them AJ Bennett sent you um, and just enjoy it. Y'all have a great day and thanks for watching and listening.